Um, I first got a banana yellow Gibson Epiphone when I was 13, because I was really into Bush. Um, but then I stopped being into Bush, like shortly thereafter. And then I started to learn how to sing by covering Sublime songs. After that, I started to write my own stuff and like never really planned on it being heard. And then I saw um, The Devil and Daniel Johnston. And then I realized that you could write music that's not polished or like you don't have to have like a record deal. And so I got really excited after I saw that movie and I just started to um, record my own stuff. I was in East Lansing at the time. I was going like through a lot and I moved back to Saginaw and I was homeless. And um, I showed somebody like this, a couple songs that I had written. And so they wanted to ask if I would uh, go into like their recording studio. That was Jeremy Valander. There's an album that ended up being called I've Been Better. And we recorded it and I like used the recording studio as like my home for the summer. Cause I it was, didn't have anywhere else to go. And so we did 10 songs and then um, I had a warrant out for my arrest. I'm not sure how much of this I should have. Um, but um, the, like the, after we finished everything that had to be done with the record, the night of, the Michigan State Police Fugitive Task Force came and got me from the Behringer building, from the building. Um, and so um, I like, did what I had to do and I like, got out and then kind of kept with music for a while. But I guess like music is just a way to um, I think like anybody that dabbles in music knows it. it's just a way to express yourself. And if you don't have that kind of safety valve, then you can go crazy, you know? Um, one of my favorite writers is Tennessee Williams and him and his sister Rose, I think is her name was, were a lot alike, but Rose didn't have any type of talent um, in terms of creativity and Tennessee did. And so like, she went crazy and he didn't, and he said it's because he had an outlet. So that's kind of how I think about like making movies or writing screenplays or um, doing music. Because Jeremy Valander has always recorded all my music. And I applied to Jeremy and it's like, I have all these songs, I have 10 songs and I want to record them. And so I went, he has a place in Battle Creek with the recording studio. And so I went there and then I would like, uh, play the melody and do the bones of the song and then they go to bed and then I had to write the lyrics for the next day and so that's like how I usually go about it and my main focus of um, a structure of a song is that it shouldn't be over two minutes I like the idea of it being like super short something that's really beautiful for a minute and 30 seconds doesn't have to prolong itself any further and so that's why I like things a bit more like short and sweet. I've always like um, shied away from identifying myself as a musician because like I've met a lot of people that do identify themselves as musicians, you know what I mean? Like, I you know, I'm in a band or like I'm a listener, you know what I mean? It just, it seemed very distasteful. And so I never wanted to like, promote myself as being um, like a folk singer or anti-folk singer. And um, I was talking with someone that I was friends with in Ann Arbor. And he actually used to be in Kid Rock's band, like during when they recorded like Ball with the Ball or like whatever, like Cowboy, all those, he was the basis for like that band. I had told him, I was like, you know, I don't really care about, like, self-promotion. And he's like, well, then you're never going to be a musician. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, okay. I'm not, like, a huge fan of Jack White, but what he had said one time is, like, you, just get, like, you have to get out of your own way, which is hard to do. Because, like, if you're writing a song, 
you have to think that it's going to be for an audience, right? You have to think that you're going to do something, you're going to produce something or you're going to create something for somebody. And if you kind of get out of that mindset and just kind of go back to what I had said about Tennessee Williams of just like, I just need to get this stuff out of me, then it becomes a little bit more tangible to people that have, you know, similar feelings about creativity or art. I forget who it was. It was Fran Dersowitz? I'm not sure. It was like a Martin Scorsese documentary. But she said in the 80s and 90s, um, during the AIDS crisis, a lot of like the best critics were all gay and they all died, right? And those were people that would be very nitpicky and very particular about what's good and what's bad. And since they all passed away, that opened up the floodgates to where everyone's a writer or everyone's a musician. Everyone is like someone that, that can create something and everyone can. And like that was part of why like the, my musical project was named Edgar Casey and his guitar is because Edgar Casey was a uh, prophet in the 1940s that believed that everybody could be a, a, a prophet and that everybody had the mystical ability to do what he did. And I agree with that back when I first started the project, but now I totally disagree with that. I think there are some people, it's, it's good that they're expressing themselves, but it's for reasons that are more commercial. They're like, they wanna seek fame for different reasons. I'll talk, I, there's one person in particular in Michigan that I'd played a show with and he's like, I just want to be the greatest like rock star in the world. Um, he or she will go unknown in terms of name, but I was like, Do well, and then what? And then you get like a nice car and a nice house and then that's what you're in it for. I get everyone needs like validation for love and stuff like that, but have a child or something. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
notes in the flowers say I still care about you And I have waded through snowstorms The nights they grew long said And think about you December We had made plans to go and meet our way through We spent Christmas together Hoping in presents The best one I got it was you That's good, that's gonna get.